time is over before you know you're older so sober alone the bitch you get in my cold shoulder you crying like it's rain you causing all the pain no closure i'm colder you getting nothing joker Joker. I think I've almost gotten too used to doing something with my hands while streaming. That I'm kind of like. Good morning. Oh, morning. Go, we're going live. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, that was not enough. Good morning. Thank you. Hello, hello. Uh, thank you all for, for coming to the panel. We're going to talk about parasocial relationships and you. Um, and me? Great to see you all. Hi, everyone watching at home on PAX 2. So. Hope everyone's having a good start to PAX. Welcome on in. And we're gonna introduce ourselves and then get talking. There will be time for Q&A at the end. And I say this at the start and end of every panel, Q&A means for question and answer. I don't care about your backstory. I don't care about your context. And I'm being very literal here because we don't need it and we don't have time. So when we, talk, when we do Q&A, while we're sitting here talking, maybe take out your phone and write your question and have it ready. So, without further ado, and I will go last because moderator privilege, mm. mm -hmm. and we didn't sit in the order on this slide, but I'm gonna start with V. Hello. Uh, hello, hi everyone, I'm V Muse. I am the partner and talent manager of Codename Entertainment, AKA Idol Champions at the Forgotten Realms. <laughs> I'm also a pro DM and player, as well as a professional mini painter. That's, I, I can never Clap call louder. you, you're too cool. You are too cool. <laughs> Like Matt Mercer is next door. We need louder clapping. Yeah, come on. There you go. Yeah. I like it. Yes. That's good. Well, I'm 
absolutely awake now. Hi, I am Brian, uh, aka Urban Bohemian. I am a Twitch streamer, TTRPG player, and sometimes when they twist my arm, GM. <laughs> Next. Hi, I'm Chris Kinnears, aka The Painting Pirate, a miniature painter, variety streamer, and occasional guest on Charity One Shots, where I like to make my GMs regret their life choices by inviting me. That's true. <laughs> Uh, I am uh, Dr. Rafael Bocamazzo, uh, better known as Dr. B for long Italian name reasons. Uh, people took one look at my name and went, no. <laughs> and, uh, but yeah, I'm a, I'm a clinical psychologist in Washington State. I'm the clinical director of Take This, the oldest mental health nonprofit in games. Go check out the AFK room here, the most boring room of the show by design. Uh, I'm an occasional streamer, public speaker, author, consultant. I am professionally around. Hi, my name is Kelly Butler. I am mostly known as the Opera Geek for the main reason that I am a professional opera singer who is also a geek. Um, I am a streamer, content creator, one-time GM, and never again, thanks to Painting Pirate. <laughs> oh, no. And my husband. Um, but also, I am best known for playing my dog on Idol Champions Found the Familiar Quest. <laughs> <laughs> And I am your moderator, uh, Tanya, known as Cypher Tier Online. I am basically a ne'er do well on the internet and on occasion in real life, as evidenced by my friends who are forced to take my charity and niceness. Um, I also am a game developer, both day job and side gig of Into the Motherlands stream. And you know, you've probably seen me and Brian on Rivals Waterdeep, and I was also on Black Die Society. And as a result of all these things, this is why we're having this panel. So, show of hands, who knows what a parasocial relationship is? So, the fact that almost everyone in the room raised their hands means the people that need this panel are not here. <laughs> They're watching at home. They better be. I meant the people that are next door in line and queuing up for our friend. Um, but I'm also just being snarky. If you haven't met me, surprise. So I'm not reading this at you. I worked in corporate jobs too long to have people read slides at me. But please feel free to take a screenshot of it or take a picture of it, whatever you'd like to do. I said screenshot for those at home. But the, the TLDR of a parasocial relationship is that it's one-sided. And the people that watch us on our shows, our streams, interact with us, follow us on Twitter, Blue Sky, wherever you're landing these days, think that there is more there than there is. Um, and we're going to talk about it as everyone kind of gives their, their answer about parasocial relationships. I did want to point, oh, I did want to point out um, another kind of parasocial relationship by uh, Drs. Cohort and Emery, which looks more at social media and streaming and content creation. And that is kind of what that's aimed at. Again, I'm not gonna read it at you. This isn't school, this isn't work. Um, and this handsome fellow Uh, is going to lead us into the discussion on kinds of parasocial relationships. After um, everyone has a chance to talk about, for you, what, what kind of parasocial relationships have you encountered in your creati creativeness, creator's journey? And we all will have time to give examples, both good, if there are good ones, and bad. So who wants to go first? I mean, I'm cool to go if you want. Sure. All right, so I, I've had a plethora of uh, relationships parasocially based. Um, some have been extremely positive. Case in point was um, I have a YouTube channel where I show people how to paint miniatures and build terrain. And a gentleman emailed me out of the blue one day and he said, I just want to thank you because I have two little girls. I'm trying to get them into RPGs. They see this woman who is confident, knowledgeable, and creative. And they have locked and loaded onto your channel and they watch it every single time. They're, ma they're making terrain, they're painting minis. Thank you so much for the time and your dedication. So. He's checked in with me every so often, um, you know, maybe once a year I might hear back, letting me know how the girls are doing. So for me, that's been something that I honestly cherish and is fantastic to hear. However, on the flip side, I have been in a situation where uh, a certain individual, who will remain nameless, decided that they were very fixated with me. I don't know why, I don't know how, 
but I woke up one morning and they went through my Instagram account and liked every single selfie on my account. Not the minis, not the terrain. Jumped over to the next account, did the same thing. Jumped over to get another account, did the same thing. Blocked. Okay, for me that's an alarm that something's not right, they're not following me for the content, they're following me for the face, which isn't great for me. Then, after blocking him on all of my personal social media, he jumped over to the company that I worked with at the time and started doing very similar things, showed up in live streams and started commenting. We actually had to take it to a cease and desist level because this individual did not get that I was not his personal infatuation. So I've run the gambit of parasocial relationships. Sorry. That's okay. No, it's like, that's, that's okay. <laughs> um, I've, I've mostly had good experiences, I think. Like, like similar to what V mentioned, um, I have had people who have told me that like they or their children enjoy seeing a queer person of color streaming, being able to play games, being able to succeed, and it helps them know that they belong. Um, I think in terms of just knowing that I was going to be visibly black and visibly queer on the internet, I do tend to set those boundaries a little more strongly, and I keep, I try to keep my day job and everything out of my creative space, so I try to set those boundaries. Um, and I, I'd say like the most I've had is people generally just assuming, assuming a little bit too much friendship because you see me, and as that slide on social media said, part of what we do is being entertaining. We are, we are trying to be the person that we want you to pay attention to. It's just that we also have to remember to set those healthy boundaries to understand that it's, I am a person who's not quite a celebrity, but I am being your entertainment. Yeah, similarly, I've never had any really like outlandish, like super scary of the examples of the parasocial thing. I mean, go figure, beardy white dude on the internet. People don't really mess with me the way they like to others. Not that it doesn't happen, but you know, it's, it's less likely. I think the, the way I find it more manifests is people tend to blur the line as to when a relationship stops being parasocial, um, particularly in the streaming sphere where somebody has been around as a member of the community for a very long time. That does not equate to being a friend or having any kind of measure of responsibility. I've definitely observed like over time people tend to think that either they need to be healthy when the mods are dealing with a situation or the rules like when it comes to things like backseating no longer apply to them because they're you know a regular but that's still that there's that parasocial kind of line there. Tenure does not mean you get to blur that. Oh, okay. All right. That's it. <laughs> Um, I, I deal with it in all sorts of different ways because, I mean, in, there's, there's different ways of conceptualizing things like this in the psychology world um, and, you know, ever since therapy was formalized in Western Europe 150 years ago, you know, we talk about things like transference and I won't get into the boring details of this, especially this early in the morning, all of you are going to take a nap, but, um, you know, the, the line is... Uh, an awareness on the part of the individual. Like, we all have media figures that we idealize. Cool, for better or worse. I I idealize two guys named Rogers, Fred and Steve. And Captain America and Mr. Rogers, when I think about what would they have done, tends to be good advice. Um, but the way people have approached me being a psychologist is a little different than a lot of folks up on this panel um, in that they often want rescuing. They want help. And my presence has been, uh, an ex there's an expectation set that I will help them when I, it's not appropriate a lot of the time, especially in a streaming space. It's not private, it's not ethical, it's not legal. Um, and so some of the, you know, sometimes it, uh, people are grateful for, uh, like, like Brian has mentioned, for being visibly of, of a certain identity. I'm very public about being autistic and ADHD. It informs a good chunk of what I do. Um, but on the flip side, um, I've had stalkers. Um, and I <laughs> keep an evidence file now. Uh, so it it just kind of goes both directions on in terms of how things can shake down. Uh, mm, yeah. Mm, mm. 
<laughs> so I've had um, some v varying degrees, just like everybody else here. Probably my favorite was the fact that after I sang Musetta and La Boheme for the first time, I'm like walking to my car, I have a hoodie on, sweatshirt, and I just hear someone yelling in the parking lot, opera geek. Hmm? <laughs> and it is a fellow streamer called Praxagora Thesmophoria, who turns out lives 20 minutes away, and now we go to Sunday dinners at her house, and it's fantastic, um, because she's an amazing cook. But you also get the people that have come into my streams and are, in some cases, obsessed with certain anime characters I did the voiceovers for. Uh, the worst example being somebody coming in, he's just saying, someday I'll find where you live. You know, I understand that maybe they meant it as someday I want to meet you, but that's not what they said. And you have to be really careful about how you approach people. Um, probably the best compliment I've ever gotten for performing applies to this on both sides. Somebody said, when you came out on stage, you made everybody in the audience feel like they were your friend. That's a great compliment but it's a double-edged sword in a lot of cases because people will cross boundaries. Um, if you're open about your mental health, like I am, like pretty much everybody is here, people like to trauma dump in your chat. And it can get really um, interesting. I, I, I think on the balance, I've had a lot of great, great interactions, but people do tend to step a little across that line <laughs> quite a bit. Uh, and that's actually a great segue to the three kinds of parasocial relationships we're going to talk about. And because I am that person, we're not going to start with the audience to creator performer one that everyone is familiar with. We're going to start with the creator to audience. Uh -oh. Because, <laughs> what? Uh -oh. oh, yes, we've seen those people that, you know, I don't want to say prey on intentionally, but they will use the goodwill of their community to be like, oh, I really want to go to PAX, but oh no, I can't afford it. Suddenly, their coffee button, their dono button is going off on their chat. And, you know, assuming nothing about their actual situation, whatever, but when you see the same behaviors over and over, there's one of two things you can consider. Either their community is very giving and loving and wants them to be able to do things and have cool stuff, or they are very aware of this and know the right words to say to, to get people to empty their pockets. And anyone watching at home, if you think this means I'm calling people predators, that's a you problem, maybe hit dogs holler. Because the people sitting on this panel, I have all met through streaming and online. There are people, there, I mean, I've known Brian the longest, but everyone I know that's here at this show that is a friend, I've met because streaming online, we're not saying that parasocial is always bad or inherently bad, but it can get very dark and very scary. And with that in mind, uh, let's talk about creator to audience. And since we went, starting with V, uh, let's mix it up. I'm gonna put Raphael on the spot. what I do? <laughs> you exist. Cool. Um, but you know, you've talked, we've talked about this a lot, both as friends and as colleagues. Yeah. Um, but also all of us in one way or another perform in the public eye. We're here doing panels and games. Brian's a PTI fellow. I was a fellow at West. Or just we exist as our authentic selves and that gives people weird ideas about how they can interact with you because they either, well, imprint is weird. That's people to animals, I'm not gonna say that. But they, they find a commonality and they, the commonality is here and here. They think it's here and it's not. So, Raf, yeah. <laughs> let's talk about this. This creator to audience. What what is your thoughts and experiences with this? I mean, I I I don't I think that a lot of content creators, especially when they're first starting out, they don't realize that the instant you hit that going live button, you're not just playing video games for your friends. You're a broadcaster. If you got an audience of two people, you're a broadcaster. And the instant you go live, um, I, I like to think about things in terms of are you responsible for somebody or are you responsible to them? And once you're a broadcaster, your responsibilities to people change. Over couch co-op. 
and now you are cultivating a community. And um, anecdotally, I think, especially when content creators are starting out, they don't think about it like a business space. They don't think about deliberately cultivating community, and they just they talk. They often talk about things in term in very f overtly friendly terms. I mean, how many how many spaces have you been in where they use terms like family or friends? And in, with new media and you know evidence starting to show a more one and a half directional relationship where there is some degree of reciprocity that confuses some people when you're starting to blur the lines with names like that like where the you know f fairy family i don't know i mean something like that i don't know if anybody uses that one but um it, it can blur those lines anymore and so um you know tanya tanya used the name my friends call me but i'm very defensive about that if you don't know me you call me dr b until I tell you otherwise, mm -hmm. or you know, it, we it, err on the side of formality, like you would in any other circumstance, regardless of how familiar you think you are with my life. You're not familiar with it. You're familiar only with what I tell you online, yeah. which is not my the entirety of my existence. The same way with any other content creator. Hopefully, that my ADHD um, ambling is answering your Maybe question. Was... I realized did I lose track of it? A little bit, but Sweet. that's okay. What was Once. the question? <laughs> you can see it. It's right there. We're oh, hey. We're talking about that one. That's the slide we're on. It's, it's okay. Awesome. All right. Does anyone else want to tackle this before we move on to our, our next um, creator to creator? I, I will say that, like, there's also a, a degree of that, like the top one, greet everyone with pet names. So there's a, also a degree of that. Uh, like, I wanted a gender neutral way of greeting everybody and I like hedgehogs mm -hmm. so everybody became hedgehogs and they are my hedgehog army that's a lot different than saying hey you're my best friend slash family mm -hmm. and you have to understand that there is a very um, fine line there and like uh, Dr. B said you err on the side of being a little bit more formal until the person that you're approaching says otherwise and you know that's kind of I don't know just my little my little thing I like hedgehogs yeah and I, <laughs> I, I think it's sort of inherent there that we you know we're looking for better ways to refer to the people who may be in that sphere and even using community that word still carries a bit of a weight and as, mm -hmm. as Raf said when you start even calling your viewers a community you need to acknowledge the responsibility that you are now taking yep for that and um, I also feel uh, it was sort of talking about the slide earlier when anytime I feel that money starts to enter and not just the standard you are paying five dollars to subscribe to somebody on Twitch or you're paying or subscribing to a YouTube channel but the moment that a creator does say or imply hey I have a wish list or I'd like to do a thing the minute that that money starts to come into the picture y you as a creator and you as the viewer slash consumer need to be super aware of what the boundaries are on that. You know, you are not paying, you're not paying their way. They don't owe you necessarily anything that should be inherent in that relationship, regardless of how much the creator is like, oh, I'm just a small little bean that can't take care of myself. They're not really asking a viewer to take care of them. That's, that's a very different consensually agreed upon relationship. <laughs> yeah, no, it's true, because quite frankly, I pulled back on doing wish lists, and um, honestly, people were saying, can you get us a wish list? Can you go onto Patreon? And I pulled back from doing all that because um, the sugar daddy factor. I actually got gentlemen emailing me, hey, I sent you this money, now I want you to send me a pic. It's like, sir, I am not JC Penney's. This is not happening. Um, <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> I mean... If you understood that reference, go take Tyler. I was going to say. I need to stretch my back. <laughs> How dare you? Is, is this a joke I'm too British to understand? Yes. Uh, <laughs> yes. Um, it's it betterage. It's betterages. Okay. okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. It was seeing that happen where I was like, you know what? This is a huge crossing of lines for me. I pulled way back from even doing it, even though it's been requested of me. I'm like, no, it's, I'm not a comfortable person with this one. And the other thing that I notice um, with some content creators is, bye everyone, I love you. It makes my skin crawl. 
because that just flings that door wide open for people to be like, oh, they said they love me, me. It's like, no, they're just using a term of endearment that's too broad and can mean too much to different people. Um, so that's something where I've always made a point where I will not say, love you so much, unless I know it's a very personal friend in the chat, you know, hey, I'll talk to you later, love you, bye, type of thing. Um, so I made a point to come up with an expression to end my streams, be good to yourselves, be good to each other. I, I actually, me, oh, sorry, I jumped yeah, For me, that felt like a safe way. It was like, hey, you know, your welfare and well-being is important to me. Doesn't mean I love you. <laughs> I need to know you better. Well, I, I actually deliberately borrow a phrase along those lines from a middle school teacher I know, and I've now used it at this point more than she has. Um, I heart you all in a school appropriate way. <laughs> 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 because it, it, you know, it conveys, I do have gratitude, I do have affection for the people who come to watch, for the people who come to participate, and at the same time, we're subtly, actually overtly acknowledging, there's some boundaries here, okay? Like, I, we're, we're not buds, we're not friends, and in some cases we are when we hang out in person, but it, it, you know, acknowledging, I do have some affection and gratitude for you, but there is a limit, there is a wall here, okay? Um, and I, I would just implore any creator of any size, be cognizant, mm -hmm. because there's a power differential. Your words carry weight to your audience, no matter the size. I think, I what, tying back to a, a point that you had made earlier, Dr. B, about once you go live, you're no longer just playing games for your friends, you are broadcasting, and those words having more intrinsic meanings, it's something that I had to really train myself out of before starting, because I grew up in rural England, so it's extremely common for us to just refer to somebody as love. Like, oh, thanks, love. Appreciate it, love. Like, that's just a common thing that we do. And it, that's a way in a lot of, like, Australia, that's really common as well. And it's something that you don't immediately think of because it's so ingrained in just the way you communicate. But especially given that your audience is not going to be regional to you. Like streaming as, some, again, somebody who grew up in the UK, my audience is not either just US or, or British. They're around the world. And that's the case for all of us. So just because it feels completely natural to you, it's worth putting that little bit of extra thought into if those particular terms have additional meanings and either using something that's more, more neutral, like Hedgehog Army is honestly one of my favorite ones I've ever heard. I really love that one. Um, like mine is, is crew because I lean to the, the pirate vibe with it. But it just those, the, the words that even in just casual conversation can still elicit that, have also that double meaning of a strong emotional attachment are probably ones to avoid using just to be safe. Sorry, I just had a moment of, what do I say? This is all good. <laughs> <laughs> all right, the dreaded creator to creator, because I'm just gonna be that person, say it a lot of times dealing with other creators in any space, but especially in the TTRPG space, is like crabs in a barrel. There's a lot of, me too, I'm going to step on you until I get what I want and then forget you exist. Yeah, I said it, and if you want to see me, fight me after this panel. Hmm. Because there are too many people that when you're on the rise, or they see that you know certain people, suddenly, oh my God, V, it's ah, so good to see you. You too. And that's genuine, because I, I love V. She's my this friend. true. <laughs> but if someone walks up to me at this convention and goes, oh my God, it's you, I'm so happy to see you, and they literally can't name a thing I've done, something I'm in, and all they want to do is get to know you because of who you know, that is a parasocial thing. A friend of ours, Gabe Hicks, tweeted about that as well because apparently he had that experience at Gen Con of people coming up to him mid-conversation with others wanting to get to introduced to the people he was talking to or to be brought around to other people that he knows. You know, it is common knowledge. A lot of us interact with like the folks from Crit Roll, what have you, or we are in the same sphere and they assume because you're in that same sphere that I can just ring up Matt and be like, hey, this person wants to do blah, blah, blah. That is so not true. Even for me, I would never do that. Hey, you must have just gone on stage. Yeah. Some of them. Uh, yeah. No, yeah. they're agreeing with you. That's yeah, that's, yeah. Like, so, they yeah. Are yeah. Agreeing. yeah, that's concurrence. That is what that is. Yes. I just thought that was hilarious mm -hmm. timing. Um, <laughs> But you know, a lot of people in the space, in the TTRPG space, creator space, 
often we wind up siloed into ourselves because we don't want to seem like we're trying to use other people. And at least I will vouch for the people on this panel and folks I know in the audience, that is not what we're doing when we want to collab with you, but because others use people so often, it is so hard to get past that first hurdle of, are you genuine? Do you want to actually be my friend? Or do you think you can step on me to get to where you want to go? Um, and for this one, I'm going to put Kelly on the spot to start. Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> Why? But Kelly, you, you can help fulfill all my dreams of, of singing professionally, right? What? What? I Why can't even fulfill that? my own dreams. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Wow, oh, Kelly, you sad. missed the whole point. God. You missed the whole point. Have you seen the panini that is happening in the world? I can't. I can't do but it. But it was more hyperbole of this, I, if I came to you I and know, said, I know, I know, I know. Oh, my God. <laughs> okay. And I'm still friends with everyone on this panel. Uh -huh. <laughs> Somehow. Um, I will say that um, creator to creator, it, it, it's very difficult because people don't think of those of us who are in the performance space having massive anxiety about things like that. Um, they see, you know, I tell people, for instance, you know, I'm an extroverted introvert. I'm mostly an introvert who wants to be in my pajamas. But because of the career I chose, I have learned to be what people need at certain times. You know, here's opera donors, here's people on your stream. But that doesn't mean that I don't look at other creators and think that either I am less than or hold them onto a pedestal of some kind, even subconsciously. And I'm going to embarrass literally everyone on this panel because I have felt that way about literally everyone on this panel. I, I was, yeah, I'm not even joking. Don't even look at me like that. I don't even need to look to my right to know everyone's doing the like, same expression I am. You, <laughs> you have literally watched me walk into walls. <laughs> yeah, and because I saw you walk into a wall, I walked into the next one. Oh, God. It's true. Trendsetter. <laughs> you know, trends, yeah. But, like, um, a great example is V. V and I met online. Um, we you became did? really great friends pretty quickly, actually, because yeah. we, we just, you know, meshed. Um, and V did things like make me edible terrain to freak people out so I could just start eating terrain in her classes. Um, I love that. <laughs> why, why did I not know about this? this? Is yeah, what? You, have, you have two people on this panel who cook extensively. <laughs> not me. Yeah. I no, can show no. you how to eat your terrain. <laughs> it was literally like um, she had me building next to everybody else in the class and then swap out the other one. She gave the person with the attention span of a Labrador puppy on caffeine terrain made out of Twix. It was graham crackers, coconut flakes, oh, Twix, yeah. food coloring, and um, dyed powdered sugar. <laughs> <laughs> so, it was a lot. Could, so this was done then to play a Twix on everyone else at the table? Excellent. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. It was great. Okay. Well, context is, I would make things sometimes, you'd be like, I want to eat it. I'm like, don't eat it. Yeah. And finally, it's like, you know what? Let's make something you can actually eat to freak Yeah. yeah. Basically, and, like, wait. And I think it's a great example of the fact that creator to creator can turn into amazing friendships. Yes. Everybody on this panel that originally I felt like I was less than, everybody on this panel has become my very dear friend. And I genuinely... Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> yes, cheering for friendship. Yes. Yeah, friendship. Uh, you know, um, like literally everybody except Brian. Sorry, Brian and, and Dr. B. Everybody else has been in my house. Oh. Played, uh, I was wondering where that was going. Played with Scotty, you know, gotten to, to chill. Um, you know, met my husband. Hi. Um, he's there. I, I'm not just saying hi to random people. Um, <laughs> But it can turn into a great friendship, but also you can still feel that constant, I have opened up too much and this is now going to be exploited against me yep. to use to get to the next. Like you suddenly become the, the, the mat on the, the step stool for somebody. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's the problem. V, can I have more edible terrain? I'll make some tomorrow. Thank you. I, well, wow. one of the, uh, just to chime in on something, the, one of the things that people often forget about, I've noticed, uh, especially early in their career, when developing business relationships is the second word. 
And real relationships take time, and they are reciprocal, and they, they're built on mutual trust and mutual understanding. And you know, there are two, Tanya and V are so good at building relationships. I, I, I'm, every time I, every, no, you don't know this. I'm like taking notes every time I watch you interact with somebody. It's the, <laughs> it's autism brain, okay? I'm just like, okay, they used social response 72, Charlie, <laughs> good effect. <laughs> but no, you're so, you're so good at it and you're so good at, at, le at just honoring people's experiences and not being too much and letting those relationships grow naturally yeah. over time, which is what a lot of people try and rush. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, literally my job is as a creator, I'm working with other creators um, daily. And someone actually asked on one of our streams, Lauren, remember that? You were sitting right there. Um, in one of our streams, someone said, do you ever get um, fangirl over the people you meet? Uh, because you work with all these different people. And I said, absolutely not, because for me, I work with people. I don't work with personalities. And that is something I hold as true to my core as possible, because when I send out that initiative email, hey, we want to work with you, I truly mean you as this individual who has created whatever platform it is, we truly want to work and collaborate with you. I'm happy to keep the email going. If you want to jump into a call, we can do that. I make sure that I approach other creators as people because I know as a creator myself, I'm a person. I have my boundaries. I have my wants and my needs and my considerations when I'm approached for collaborations on my end. How would I want to be approached in the opposite direction, essentially? So it's something where creator to creator, you have to be careful with what your own expectations are of the person you're approaching, but also what their expectations of you might also be. Um, you know, it's a double-edged sword. It's, I get to work with a lot of fantastic people, but I also get people who know that I work with a lot of fantastic people who are like, hey, hi. How you doing? How you doing? So about becoming a da 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 and it's like, no, yeah. no. And I think we've sprinkled, like, we, we sprinkled the word work a lot. We sprinkled the word business in here. And I think to, rem to remember that, you know, I always think about my coworkers. Yeah. You know, I, I like them. We work together. That's great. I am not friends. I may be friends with two of them, and that's after working with them for years yeah. and getting to know each other. And you have to kind of remember a lot of the creator to creator thing is, as a streamer, your audience should you should you should be looking for your audience to be viewers and people who want to watch your content. Your audience should not be other streamers. That should not be who you're appealing to because that really does feel like you're looking for a reciprocal relationship and that's not how you should engage in this. And a lot of us, we, we work together, we, we're all freelancers in this space, so we're kind of like each other's coworkers and those stronger relationships may develop, they just may be really good business relationships, one or the other, but you do need to recognize that you're not going to meet someone who does the same thing you do and immediately be best friends. Yeah. All right. I will say sometimes that also does happen, but it's, it, it's not how you should be approaching meeting somebody you stream with, meeting someone at a convention, et cetera. Um, also in the interest of time, I'm gonna move to the next slide. Um, I also do wanna have time for Q&A. So remember, when we call for Q&A, there are mics in each, uh, on, it, oh. in that aisle, sorry, it's bright, I can't see people. Yeah. Um, but again, question, not a comment, not a backstory. I know we're at a TTRPG con, I don't need your character sheet, because my dump stat is strength. I will come off this table and this stage. Just a reminder, this is the teacher and me. Questions start with who, what, where, why, when, and how. <laughs> um, and so this is a big one, and I was thinking about it a lot in, you know, between we, um, so Chris was on this panel with me at TwitchCon last year. Raph was supposed to be on the panel, but life happened. Um, and we, I got we, the flu. <laughs> he did, but in absentia, Chris was was a good stand-in, Doctor B, um, as he is also a beardy white guy. <laughs> yeah, I, and I had Doctor B's notes. It's the most intelligent I've sounded on any panel I've ever done. <laughs> that's, 
I felt so guilty about dropping out. I think I wrote like an essay of like, here are my answers, and da 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 da. This is the abbreviated version. It was six pages long. You were, I'm you sitting were there cosplaying with these, Dr. B. I was. Yeah. I was yeah. sitting there with yeah. these psych terms. Like, I have no idea what the phrase <laughs> I just said was, but it sounded really impressive, and it was in a British accent. I win. Oh, there you That's go. It. Yeah. <laughs> but to get <laughs> to get back to the to the parasocial relationship oh, yeah. <laughs> last that a lot of us are familiar with the audience to creator, the people who do not understand boundaries. Mm. Um, and I'm very intentionally wearing my Baldur's Gate shirt because of this, because we've seen it. Wow, I heard that Muttley snicker from someone. That was me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, because we, we saw it a lot with like the Dragon Age fandoms, Mass Effect fandoms, and because those same kind of feelings are happening with Baldur's Gate, we're now seeing it with the Baldur's Gate mm -hmm. fandom, especially because the actors are so much more accessible at the time, you know, like DA Mass Effect came out, a lot of them are streaming the game. A lot of them are at events. You know, like MCM London happened. MCM Birmingham is happening right now. Some of the actors are there, and so it made me think about it because it's weird. Because I'm in the industry, but I'm also I am a fan of these people and of the game and of the writing and everything else. But I've also seen, and this is unkind, and I know it's unkind, but I can't think of a better way to phrase it, the absolutely unhinged way some people have responded to the characters and the actors. Um, and the other part of it, too, is um, we, some of us have seen this that have been on actual plays or even one-shots. The last bullet point of people get a little too invested in the character you play. I played Salisa Storio for five years. That character is near and dear to my heart. A lot of myself is in that character, but I am not Salise. I have had people come up to me and address me. Oh my God, you're Salise. And I'm like, no, I'm, I'm Tanya. You can call me Cypher because I have no idea who you are. Um, and that's another part of that too, is that people want to use your name. Like I have addressed people on this panel by name because we are friends. We have hung out. I've been in their house on some occasions, or I can call them and they are actual factual I know them well, people, versus like when I started working with c &E Games and, and other stuff, I knew V and we're friends, but that was years ago. The relationship had to build from there. Same with Dr. B. I've known Brian the longest, 20 years now. I, I feel like it's longer. I, I, it's, it, feel, it's it feels forever. like forever. It does. It, <laughs> you know, like you're friends with someone to the point of, when did we meet? I don't know. That's ancient history. Live journal. Live journal days. Ancient so again, anyone who got that reference, take your ibuprofen. I heard that ooh in there the audience go. from over there. <laughs> yeah. um, so, the, so the TLDR is basically, you know, the people that, that blur the lines. Oh, yeah. That, you know, or they, our least favorite thing ever at a TTRPG channel. Did you know that you can't actually do that? But in the player's handbook on page 845, <sighs> that this stat does not work because you're a paladin of this particular denomination and Tyr would never let you do that. And I was like, Tyr's not real, at least in D&D parlance. Other deities, we'll talk about that later. Those are the kind of things we're talking about where because they show up to every stream, they sub to your channel, they give you Patreon, what have you. They think that they can just do whatever they want in your chat or should they come meet you? And this is why I tweeted, if you meet someone, please just don't come up and say, I follow you on Twitter. We're wearing masks, I hope. You telling me that you follow me on Twitter tells me literally nothing. Or anyone else on this panel. So you need to remember that you feel you know us and us being the broader spectrum very well because you're visiting our living rooms, you're doing whatever, you're watching us play these characters and be very emotional, very vulnerable, very open. That does not mean you actually know us. As Raf said, you know what you get to see online, what you get to see on streams, what you get to see on panels. When I leave this panel, I'm going to go do another panel and then I'm going to go hide because I'm an introvert. I am not someone who enjoys and recharges from social interaction. But yet people assume because you do these things, you must be an introvert. No, not true. And this will, um, we're gonna talk about this for maybe 10 more minutes. And in the meantime, at about uh, 1220, if people can be in line at the mic and have your questions, make it relevant, make it a question, or I will tell you to sit down. And I'm gonna uh, put Chris on the spot to start this one. Uh -huh. Who? So that was your cue to line up. You, yeah, okay. Um, what's the specific question? <laughs> there um, talking about... Oh, just, just go. Um, so I'm going to... Sorry, my, my brain was just... 
the train went off the tracks with a, a slightly different uh, topic of thought, which is uh, relevant to, to this, which is kind of th feeling entitled to the, the time with the creator. Oh God, yeah. And thinking about this, especially in the context of a con, seeing them wandering around. And the, the, the reason the train was pulling into a completely different station was thinking of how this also applies to people who are doing cosplay. And anyone who has ever done cosplay knows the moment you sit down to take a bite of a sandwich, 500 photographers will appear out of the ether trying to get a picture of you. You may want to go and say hi to somebody. It doesn't mean they're in a great situation to be said hi to. They, they may be busy or with friends or hustling off to their next panel, which is a terrible time to come in and ask to be unbanned from their chat. Right, Tanya? Uh, <laughs> True story. That last happened year, here last year. Yeah. Last year, PAX Unplugged, on my way to DM Rivals, someone literally asked me to unban them in person. Yeah. But, um, I am dead serious. Chris is my witness. It's true. I was. I, I had to, to help. No, no, we got a place to be. Let's go. Uh, yeah. Went to the full handler mode with that one. But it all kind of ties into it. And again, it's, it's the same thing as it being upset when a creator isn't on. Like, I, I am an extrovert. I'm a socially awkward extrovert, but I get that I, the energy for me comes from being around people. But there is also going to be a limit to that. There will be a point at which I just need to go and quietly have a breakdown in the corner somewhere. <laughs> so it's, it's never... With the assumption that you have paid attention to people's you know, boundaries and have approached in a polite and respectful way, it's generally not going to be about you. Don't take it personal. Um, I, have, I have to say something. Um, you also, you, it takes a lot for some of us to share the, I don't really want to say darker, but more difficult parts of our life, but that is also part of being human. And so when we share things that are difficult or that we experience, if we are able to joke about something, it's because we're dealing with it that way. If I, for, you know what I'm gonna talk about. If I, for instance, put up a lovely anniversary tribute to my husband, my husband goes by Pirate Jesus online. The reason is he has MS and he wears an eye patch, has a beard and long hair, pirate Jesus. So when I say, you know, I think I'll keep him, somebody that I have never heard, never spoken to, never seen, responded to the tweet, did you start with his eye? And I was like, who are you? Also, it's still there. I didn't like pop it out or anything. <laughs> But it's, it's difficult because then it makes you not necessarily want to share as much. And mm. in the case of MS, by the way, sir, you are wearing a Quest accepted MS Society tabletop event shirt. Thank you. Um, <laughs> so because of, because of things like that, it can really make us not want to share anymore. Um, so be respectful just because you see somebody, a creator, joking with their friends or loved ones about something that might look a little dark to you doesn't mean that you should join in on it mm -hmm. either. <laughs> That's all. Well, okay. uh, can I throw in an idea of, you know, you mentioned the idea of entitlement. And a good question to ask yourself in any situation is what am I actually entitled to? And put yourself, a, a metaphor I like to use is the, um, a restaurant. I don't care how long you've been going to a restaurant, I don't care how much of a regular you are, you're entitled to food and friendly service. Now, friendly service doesn't mean they're your friend, necessarily, and you are probably gonna get better service given how long you've been there, but you're not entitled to know personal details about the staff. And it's the same thing with content creators. What are you entitled to by subscribing? Well, you're probably entitled to a subscription. End of story. <laughs> um, and I think to discuss like we all acknowledge that now a lot of when you talk about I guess micro celebrity and even people who you think of as actual celebrities movie stars TV stars we are so much more accessible now you know we we have to be on social media whether somebody is on social media as themselves as the personality as the person who is on and you know again realize that both as if you're going into streaming if you're going into actual play you're putting a project out there realize that even putting together a new actual play part of that support means that you have to be somewhat accessible you have to kind of get people 
a little bit invested in watching your show, in engaging with it and being part of that viewership and, and realize that that's where, you know, that's where you have to be a little more, I guess, stringent in drawing those healthy lines and those healthy boundaries and realize that while somebody, while I can go and follow somebody's account on Twitter and see what they're talking to, that, that doesn't necessarily mean that I, I mean, I might now know some factoids about them that I didn't know before, but it doesn't necessarily mean that we're bonding over anything, even if I share their particular anything. And um, I, I feel like our accessibility, and sadly for a lot of marketing purposes, it's a need more than a desire, is, is making it more difficult for people to draw those lines, and that's where it gets very blurry. Thank I, you. I had a therapist do that to me. <laughs> no, like, well, I was searching for a therapist. <laughs> And they looked me up, and they responded to my initial email with a ton of information I didn't share in the initial okay. email. Oh, that's okay. not, yeah. that's, that's that's not good. They did not understand how inappropriate that was. Yeah. I tried to teach them. They didn't understand it. it and, and with that lovely tidbit of creepiness, uh, we're going to hop over Q&A, because I'm starting to get the, your time is now winding down messages. So let's hit Q&A. Uh, hello, thank you for coming. What is your question? Hi, yeah, this has been fantastic, thank you. Um, on creator-to-creator -creator relationships, uh, I tend to be hyper-aware of them, and then that makes me bad at networking. And your question? Yes, uh, how, uh, oh, do you have any recommendations for initiating and then building relationships? Being a nice person and saying hello and being genuine? Yeah. That, I can jump right into this one, because I've been asked that many times because of what I do. Uh, if you're seeking a collaboration with someone, open up, introduce yourself, say who you are, what you do, and then go into, I'm aware of you because, comment on something, a project they have done, let them know why. I think it'd be great if we could work together, and then go into that reason, wrap it up. Keep it short, sweet, simple. Make sure you acknowledge who they are, who you are, Look forward to hearing from you. If you are interested, give them that out. Don't make it an obligation and let it sit and see where it goes. Next. Thank you. Next, please. Oh, hi. Oh, hi. <laughs> um, I have two questions. The first is about uh, audience to creator and the second is creator to audience. All right, make them uh, quick because we do have a queue. Will do. Uh, how do you suggest that audience members reconcile past mistakes regarding parasocial relationships and be better about in the future about making sure they don't cross boundaries? And then the second question is, how do you suggest that audience members who recognize that the content creator, a content creator who is crossing boundaries in a way that is predatory pull back from the community without feeling guilty? Uh, the second one, I don't know how to help anyone with that because we can't manage anyone's emotions. It depends on how much you're invested in that person. And I will let someone else answer the first question. Just one of you, though. I said one, like, not they're, none. They're hard, it's a hard question. Um, yeah. I, I, Insofar, you know, I, I think I, I know how I want to try and take this one, because it the the way I, I think about that is the same way I really approach whether you have hurt anyone in life, which is that nobody owes you their forgiveness, and that is your problem, not theirs. You don't. It, the the best way I think to rec to reconcile past mistakes is to move on and not make them again. Don't go out seek it because there's a, there's definitely a, a desire right to go out and seek that i've changed please acknowledge this that's on you that's not on the person who was slighted so just it it sounds reductive but honestly just be better because speaking as as a creator we notice we we do notice when somebody has been corrected taken the lesson and it, it is appreciated even if it's not necessarily something that's appropriate to outright acknowledge and uh, while we do q and I've moved on to this other slide, which will also help with some of these questions. <laughs> Thank you. Um, what would be the best way to know when an audience member is ready for more responsibility, like maybe becoming a mod on a Discord server or something? Uh, that's not really the topic of the panel, but if mm. anyone has a quick answer. When they're taking initiative and actually helping you out ahead of time before it's even asked or requested. If someone is willing to be like, I'll grab the link, I'll do this, and that type of thing, and they aren't pushing it themselves, that's usually a good sign. Thank you. Thank you, V. Mm -hmm. Next. Hi. Uh, this actually ties in kind of to the second point. Um, when somebody comes up to you in person as maybe having one of those uncomfortable uh, conversations, do you have any tips or techniques that you've come up with to kind of 
disengage from the conversation without being too dismissive or rude. I fail this one. Who wants to take yeah, it? Yeah, no, I. That is. Uh, I. Um, <laughs> I have a lot of reasons for disengaging, and many of them legit. Um, I am often on a lot of panels, and I got to bounce. Um, but sometimes uh, the buddy system. Uh, we, we all tend to look out for each other in a lot of ways, and if somebody is being inappropriate or we notice uh, you know, a signal that we prearranged or something, we will make an excuse and usher a friend away. And uh, the buddy system is often the most unintrusive and the most subtle, but um, I gotta go bounce to my next meeting. Usually true, 90% of the time. Um, you know, there's a lot of ways of doing it subtly, but if somebody is not taking the hint, it is okay to be overt about your boundaries of, hey, I need to go and right now, you continuing to follow me makes me uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. And if they're at that point not willing to disengage, well, that's what the enforcers are for. Yeah. yeah, and if it's something where it's coming in online, you can say, thanks for reaching out. I understand where you're coming from, but right now I feel like you're crossing a boundary and I'd appreciate your respect to disengage and let me kind of process this and leave me alone until I reach out to you. Mm -hmm. Awesome, thanks. Hi, my question. How have setting stronger boundaries uh, led to not collaborating or taking certain opportunities? Uh, the Ooh. question was, how has setting stronger boundaries led to not collaborating or taking strong, taking other opportunities? So I'll, I can I'll jump on that real quick because it's I'm not going to give any explicit situations for obvious reasons, but yeah, there have been situations where an opportunity arose and it would have involved somebody I was not comfortable working with and that is not an opportunity that is right for you and that is okay. Yeah. It was not going, it wasn't going to be an overall positive thing. Like yes, sometimes those opportunities, and it kind of, it'll suck if it then takes off and does super well, but it wasn't right and that will happen. Thank you. We might actually get through Q&A in time, amazing. amazing. <laughs> Hi, how do you feel about fan-made content, for example, Supercuts? If anyone ever makes me one, I'll tell you. <laughs> <laughs> I my, my parents found out that they can search me as a GIF on Facebook. <laughs> same. Oh, yeah, same. I do think, though, there's an interesting... Like, I don't want to get too hard into the point, but I think there's an interesting delineation, though, between, like, supercuts of your content mm -hmm. and especially for those who have done extensive TTRPG stuff, yeah. fan art. Mm -hmm. And if it can be a very different thing. And if it's of the content, like mm -hmm. yeah. there are, you know, like I have seen accounts that really appreciate the performers on Critical Role. Mm -hmm. The accounts have nothing to do with their character. It's, it's just pictures of them being cute together. And mm -hmm. while that is part of what you're consuming, that doesn't really feel, that doesn't really feel like you're a fan of what they're creating. It just more feels like you're a fan of the person. So I would say if the, if the community around that show, that stream, et cetera, is the kind where they're appreciating those moments that happen that you're creating, supercuts are fun and awesome and really cool, and the channel itself might really appreciate them. But again, it's it's got to be about what you're creating and that art versus mm -hmm. oh, this is just a this is just a supercut of every time the person smiled when they were exactly, on the show. Yeah, that, That's not yep. yeah. All right, thank you. And one quick thing about that is that. Like things like fan fiction, other stuff. Oh. Um, one, never send people fanfic that you've written about their characters, and by the love of anything you might hold holy, don't send them real pic people fiction. Oh. Mm. Look, it's a thing. I it found is. it. I it didn't want to find yeah. it, and I had to go scrub my brain. But people do this, and you know what? As long as you're not hurting anyone else, I believe in do whatever you do. But that's a very weird and very creepy boundary, personally for me. Or, but also, there could be legal implications. There were people who wanted to do like fanfic or other things of like Into the Motherlands. Cool, I'm glad you enjoyed it. Never send it to me because then that is a copyright thing that I will then have to address. Yeah. yeah. Um, I don't know if our friend is in the audience, but a friend did food for Motherlands, and that was dope. But then someone took it a step further and suggested running their own Kickstarter to do a cookbook for a game that was still in development. So be mindful of that kind of stuff. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. 
So I know a, a common scenario is for content creators to have to deal with like an overly obsessive fan. Have any we have five have minutes. Had, what is your question? Have any, have any of you had to deal with an overly obsessive content creator? Oh, other oh, yeah. content creators? Yes. I was going to say Ralph. <laughs> yeah. No, absolutely. I mean, um, because of the nature of what I do, and I'm, I'm also um, in somewhat of a unique perspective, uh, position that I'm also uh, transparent about my own mental health struggles as a mental health professional, but that's also by design to normalize the fact that all of us struggle um, in various ways. Um, but people have taken that as an opportunity to um, really seek help from me because they were in the industry. And it was incredibly uncomfortable because I might be a psychologist, but I'm not your psychologist um, for a lot of legal and ethical reasons. And also psychologists do a lot of things like education, consultation, public speaking, that sort of thing. It's not just therapy, um, but uh, yeah, I, without getting into some specifics, um, there have been a couple of occasions where people, and I had to put some hard boundaries down of, this is inappropriate, and in one case, do not contact me again or there will be legal repercussions. And it is okay to set boundaries. Your comfort level or I should say their comfort level at their misdeeds do not override your comfort level. You need to set boundaries. Protect you, period. Thanks, Raf. Thank you. All right, we have three questions in four minutes. Can we do it? Um, uh, thank you. Uh, my question is, uh, if you mod or if people have used in the past your mods as kind of a parasocial bridge, how do you kind of navigate that? I mod for a few of my friend's streams and I've had to deal with, I'm not the one broadcast. So you're, you're the first line of defense. Yeah, how do you navigate that sort of those situations, yeah. I, I mean, if no one minds me taking Go it. it. Go for it. Um, as a moderator, you are the first line of defense. Ideally, the person streaming or content creating should not even see those things. So I'll use an example, um, and this is not a brag, trust me, because I applied for it. I, I helped moderate Neil Newbon's stream. And people are very parasocial. They do not understand that he is a person outside of the character he voices. And a lot of times we shut things down before it's even seen. And there's a cavalcade of us moderating the chat. So it's keeping an eye out and also checking in with the person you're moderating for. Go, what is not okay? Put banned words in the list. So if someone comes in and tries to constantly at them, tag them, put like their actual name as a banned word so people can't constantly tag them and be that for slime defense, and then have somewhere you and other moderators can check, be it a Discord channel, a Discord DM, because uh, some of our friends that stream don't have Discords, but we do have a group DM where we can talk while they're live. And then if something's serious, talk with the other moderators, um, and go, is it time to ban this person? And I just got the one minute mark, so the two people still in queue, uh, if you don't mind waiting for us outside, we will get to your questions. Sure. thank you so much. Thank you for being here. Thank you. No problem. Uh, but I did want to make sure we could all do an outro, and then we'll be outside for a few minutes, because I have another panel to get to. I don't know everyone else's schedule. But very quickly, uh, where can people, and this is because we're a parasocial panel, where can people, with your consent, find you at this convention? <laughs> All right, so if you want to find me, basically just look for vMuse. It's either got an underscore between the V and the Muse, or there's a little bit of extra to it, but all the profile pictures look like me. That's the best way to find me. If you want to find me here at PAX, um, go to my Twitter, X, whatever you want to call it. Um, I do have a couple of posts up there that show where I'm going to be for this entire week. Uh, I'm Urban Bohemian pretty much everywhere um, in terms of where you can find me this weekend. Uh, open the PAX app. I'm one of the PTI fellows. My schedule's in there. It's on the website. Otherwise, follow me on social media. Uh, PaintingPirate.com. All of my social stuff is linked from there. That's probably the easiest. I will be over at the Eldritch Foundry booth at 2 p.m. today doing some mini painting. Um, and that's it. Otherwise, I'll just be around. Uh, you can right. find me on all the socials at the Dr. B, uh, but more importantly, follow Take This Org on all the socials because we do a lot of really great work. Um, oh, yeah, clap for him first. It's okay. Nope. <laughs> um, you can find me at kellybutler.com. Um, you can also find me as at the Opera Geek, wherever fine beverages are sold, except YouTube because somebody got it first and I'm still mad about it. Um, 
but other than that, yeah, just follow on socials. And as for PAX, if you see me, you can say hi. Just don't touch people unless they say okay. <laughs> All right. Thanks so much. Great PAX, y'all.